Hello and thank you for joining me on Ladies in Tech. Today we're going to talk about PLCs. What exactly, what are they? And uh, well to start, PLC stands for Programmable Logic Controller. A PLC is a solid state system for control and operation and manufacturing equipment. You know what, I'd also like to add to that, it does a lot more than, manu or could and probably has done a lot more than uh, manufacturing equipment. We can talk about all kinds of stuff that could be controlled by PLCs. How about home automation? How about automation for you know, big corporations with their lights and their heating and their cooling? They could probably get away with using a PLC on that stuff. Also, how about um, you see all these people that do these awesome Christmas displays? A PLC could perform that as well. I like to tell people when they say to me, what is a PLC and what does it do? I like to say to them, well, you ever seen the show that's how it's made? Well, all those processes used to, you know, uh, paint a car or pack a can full of beans, all that manufacturing equipment there on how it's made, what's the brains behind that is a PLC. So your PLC is a basically a, a manufacturing computer, okay? Um, PLCs replace common systems that used to use drums, relays, and, set, and switches. So they would always have to create all the logic by hardwiring in these other devices. The advantages of the PLCs over relays, drums, and switches types of programming is its speed, its size, there's more function, more reliable, and the user and the lack of hardwiring allows um, frequency, frequency sorry but that's frequently changes into programming so when I say that like with your PLC you can actually go in and you write your program and you can download it into the PLC if you were to use old style relays you would actually have to physically go out there and change your wiring and and those devices around in order to achieve the logic that you're um, trying to get and when you're actually programming in the relays, you use your ladder logic, and it's a high-level graphical uh, programming language. Um, <clears throat> so some common types of PLCs that are found out in uh, industry, and this is uh, one of the biggest ones is Allen Bradley, and this is very common for the North American market. Uh, there's a lot of Allen Bradleys out here. So there's a few Allen Bradleys I have shown here. We have um, the big guy here is a uh, Compax Logix. Um, this one over here, we got a Slick. Here we have a Control Logix. And here we have a Micro Logix. So these are all different platforms that Allen Bradley offers. And they have a lot more platforms out here, out there right now. So it's just an example of some of the PLCs that you can find out there. Another uh, industry leader in North America is Siemens. So here's a bunch of uh, Siemens PLCs here, and um, they can see the programming interface back there. Omron's are also uh, a strong contender for a lot of control systems in North America. And here's some, uh, some samples of their PLCs they have. And here we got some, uh, just a couple mixes here. So other suppliers that we have out there could be Modicon, Honeywell, Texas Instrument, and Festo. So let's talk about PLCs. With the PLC, we have four main components. Okay, we have to have all these four components, or else uh, our PLC is not going to work for us. So we need a pro programming device. Uh, you can have a handheld or computer. Uh, more often than not, it's going to be a computer, and it is used to enter the desired program into the memory. We have the processor unit, that's our brains of the system, okay? Power supply, supplies power to the PLC and possibly to some of our I.O. devices. And then we also have our I.O., as I'm going to say it a lot of times, but it is our input and output interfaces. So it's going to be our eyes, ears, and you know, of our taking in what's happening in the outside environment. So we got stuff like push button limit switches. And then we can uh, turn stuff on and off. So we got our outputs, which are going to be your lights, switches, motors, and solenoids. So we have all kinds of types of IO devices. Um, we have, uh, we're going to have, we'll talk about discrete IO first. So when we talk discrete, 
we're talking either on or off, open or close. So examples of this would be limit switches, push buttons. So they're going to give a high or low signal. And they can be either normally open or normally close. And then we also have analog I.O. So this is basically uh, for inputs, you're going to have a, a range of possible values. So if we have a sensor that's looking at, say, temperature, or say we also have a sensor that's looking at pressure, they're going to give us a range of values, okay, as opposed to either on or off. So it's going to be more of a resolution that we can actually look at. So when we're talking about input and output, um, we have to make sure when we're selecting them, there are several things to consider. So we want to make sure uh, the change in voltage or current signal into a logic level signal. So we want to make sure that we know what these inputs and outputs. So with the inputs, we want to make sure we know what type of signal they're going to give. Are they going to give 120 volts? Are they going to give 24 volts DC? You know, so that's really something that we need to consider. Um, if we have an output, we want to make sure what type of power or current or whatever it needs to turn it on, we have to make sure we supply that correct voltage. Uh, when we're looking at inputs and outputs, uh, when we're purchasing a PLC, we want to make sure we need to know the number of inputs and outputs we need. We're not going to purchase, say, a small Micrologist uh, 1000 and all of a sudden we need, you know, 50 inputs and you know 25 outputs and we realize that we're way over capacity right so we want to really make sure when we're designing a system that we realize how many inputs and outputs that we need we need to figure out what type of inputs and outputs we have are they discrete are they analog um, is it fixed or is it modular IO are these inputs compatible with the processor and the cards that we're using so say on the processor or the cards, sorry, I should say on the PLC, if they accept a 120 volt signal and you give them a 24 volt signal, you know, it probably won't be compatible, it won't have enough voltage to turn that signal on. But if you had it the other way around, say we have a PLC that accepts a 24 volt signal and you give it a 120 volt signal, we're going to do some damage. So we want to make sure that our IO is compatible with our processor. And the same with their output devices, right? So we want to make sure that they're compatible with what our um, PLC is giving as the output. Another thing to consider as well is, is this I.O. Uh, used in a safety circuit? There's a lot, more, um, a lot more rules about the safety when you're using these PLCs. And there's special I.O. cards that you're going to need uh, for safety circuits. And then, of course, we want to know if our I.O. is sourcing or syncing. We'll get into sourcing and syncing a little later here. So when we talk about, when I uh, was talking to you about fixed I.O., that means that um, the processor itself, the unit containing the processor, contains also the I.O. and the power supply. So it's a nice little box, everything together. You can see on these uh, PLCs that I show at the bottom that we have the whole unit all in one here. Um, so you don't have to get things separately, right? So everything's all in one package. But also with the most, most fixed I.O. configurations, you can add expansion union, units as well. So I can see down here um, that we have two extra cards here. So these expansion units, even though they could run completely on their own, or sorry, these uh, fixed units can run completely on their own, they can add expansion units to give themselves a little bit more capability. Or the capability to have different voltages as well if you needed two different, um, two different levels of voltages.